what just it. happened. It just went that back. That was perfect. That's just the way I like it. That's Tuesdays. Rough and ready. That's not yeah. Thursdays. Hello, everyone. Hey, come over to YouTube and Instagram. Hello, everybody on YouTube. Hello. Welcome to Clutter Live on a Tuesday because we were, you were sick last week, so we didn't do it. I was sick, and I was saving all my energy for a five points fall. That's true. So if you no, it was after five points fall. No, five I was sick through all of five points fall. Yeah, and, and then we didn't do. Yeah, well, I was done. Yeah. That, maybe that's what I mean to say. But if you were watching five points fall, you saw me struggling. Hey, everybody. <sighs> welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for doing yeah. that. Well, well CZ's not here tonight because he's also sick. So get better soon, yeah. CZ. Hopefully he can join us on Thursday when we have Joe Ledbetter on, which we're very excited about, too. We miss you, CZ. Yeah. How are you, Mani Tanaka? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing, doing great. Doing, doing great. I'm hanging in there. Hanging in there. That's good to know. Totally. How are you doing? Talk about it a little bit. You saw. He's, with can the we talk about it a little bit? He saw a golden eagle. I saw. Oh yeah, that's so funny. All right. Yo, so I uh, I went in for the snip, and it was fucking painful. It was definitely Thanks. not as cool as I thought it was going to be. And I was in such pain. I said to the doctor, oh, "I saw a golden eagle today," and that's the reference right there. And he was like, "Is that really tell me about the golden eagle, Alex?" And I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, I saw a soaring," and then I moaned in fucking pain. <laughs> and, yeah, it was oh fucking god, that's so funny. A whole that's lot so of laying horizontal. A whole lot of fucking watching movies. Scary movies on Halloween was my was my jam. What'd you I guys do? We're talking about birding. We're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about well, birding, but he was Tanaka was talking about birding while whilst whilst well, in the old country snip, snip, whilst. Snip. So we, I got a I got a little snip to the snip. the old testes. Uh, yeah. To your walnuts. Yeah. Yeah. We had an awesome gallery show this weekend, which unfortunately you couldn't attend because you had yeah. to put the walls on rest. <laughs> which is fine, yeah. um, but it was a really fun Halloween, our first annual Halloween custom show party, and so this time we did Pumpkin Custom Show, which was really fun, and the, they're all awesome, and we made the gallery really spooky, and someone's going to have to clean up all those cobwebs at some point. I have an update, though, on oh. like an ongoing through, through line, Oh yeah. and it happened on Saturday night. I was sorry that you weren't here, Alex, because I met... At our gallery opening, Vanilla Ice's oh, yeah. DJ. Get the fuck out. <laughs> That's true. He hung out here for hours. He was true. He did. He, and I and I, I you know I, I've, I've met him before here. He's sort of a regular at the gallery openings, and he's always kind of talking about like street art with us, and you know just generally being a cool dude. And then on Saturday night, like. As things were starting to wind down, we took a group photo and he was feeling a little bit more, I guess, cozy with me. And he just sidled up to me. He was like, hey, just so you know, like, I'm Rob's DJ. And I'm Whoa. like, oh. and he was like, you know, Vanilla Ice. And I was like, <laughs> Rob, you know, shit. Yeah. Like, like, mind blown. And so I was like, dude, we went to see Vanilla Ice at the Renegade Stadium. And he was like. Dude, I was there. That was me with Johnny Tur with uh, Johnny Turtles or whatever. No, Ninja Johnny Turtles. Johnny Ninja, who's the turtle where's the guy. turtle? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, just you know, complimenting him and commending him about um, <laughs> exactly bringing the party. exactly about like how oh. awesome they were and how like messed up the whole Coolio section of you that told, night was are you tell Michael Julio he was like yo Coolio was in a really bad mood that night and we were all like what's up yeah. uh, he showed that in his performance yeah really. so awesome. and then you know he gave me I, I won't share it publicly but he gave me like a little bit of insight into some more like personal details that really don't affect anything they're not like important it's not like making news it's just you know I don't want to break confidence because I'm sure that I'll, I'll, you know, bump into him again. Maybe we can get him to DJ Five Points. Wow, <laughs> he would totally DJ Five Points. He would totally. He can DJ bring five the points. '90s party all day. Oh, there, man. that's the right wow. crowd Dude, for a '90s a like idea. hip hop party. Can I ask you a, a Vanilla Ice question though? Because yeah. the legend of Rip Van Winkle comes from like fucking Hudson, New York, like an hour north of us, and then yeah. Vanilla Ice you know, bestowed his presence upon us here in the Hudson Valley. Do you think that there's like some correlation between the Van Winkle heritage and like this dude? I don't know. Uh, who he, knows? We'll have he to is, find out. He does live locally. 
So we will no see. No shit. That. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanilla yeah. in the house. Yeah, Vanilla, dude. I, so, I should have played some. I didn't know. Well, you know, it was very, um, it, you know, it was just, it was a real moment. It wasn't like a fake moment. So, but it was like, whoa, we're just keep getting sucked into the Coolio. Oh my God. Drama. Coolio, wherever you are, I am sorry. You were supposed to. <laughs> yes, because you, you, it's all about you. You yeah. killed, I mean, I didn't tell him that you killed Coolio. Yeah, cool. <laughs> With your words. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, Coolio. <laughs> You should have sang the chorus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, completely. Oh, and we talked about how dope Coolio's microphone was that night. Yeah, that was microphone. the only dope thing about Coolio. Oh, yeah, was like, wasn't he, it like a pizza, or was that somebody else? It was. Yeah, it was like a. It was like a. Well, it's funny that when you see triangle, you think pizza, but it was a triangular a shaped microphone that had light bulbs in it. You weren't there. What? You didn't see it. See what? The cool you know, microphone. Who was there? I'm just yeah. messing with you. I was, was there. there? But we were also far away, you know. We were drinking that um that blue yeah stadium I drank too much of the blue drink. Oh, that I'm was just that was just yeah. um, Windex. Don't worry. That was bad. Yeah, totally. No, but you know who wasn't there? Sarah Booz wasn't there. No. She knows about it though. We did tell her. And she did watch the videos. She's here though. It's taking such a sorry it taking such a weird turn. Yes. I know. It's yes. weird. Our yeah. lives are weird. Yes. Things happen. And today, actually, weird things do happen. Somebody just like fell asleep driving up Main Street and crashed into the building opposite us. So um yeah, it's been a wild day, all in all. He's okay. His little dog was a bit shook up. I was worried about his dog. Wow. Like he tried to leave him in the smoking car. And I'm like, no, no, no. Someone take that dog out of that car. It That's what happened. The guy fell asleep. Yeah, that's what he said. He nodded off. Mm. But, you know, he took out a tree this and then hit the car. The super, glass going place. This is yeah. super local. Yeah. Hyper Sorry. Local. This is hyper local news. <laughs> wow. Wow. We can, we can widen the net and talk about toys. Yeah, we should, yeah let's talk about toys. Um, thank you to everybody that picked up one of the DTA Lucky Bags on uh, Five Points Four. They are going to ship this week. We've just got to pack them up. And then we'll ship them out to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. This is true. This is true. It's this true. is true. Um, true. What else is new? Anything else that's new? Um, Not much this week. We've just been busy with five points and the DTAs. We're getting ready for the DTAs. So get ready to vote. That's coming up real soon. And we're going to have a big Designer Toy Awards announcement as well. Uh, something that we're going to do something cool in the next couple of weeks. Before the ceremony. Oh, so, there you go. You heard it here first. Yes. Stay tuned. All right. Okay. Without further ado. Yeah. Let's bring on the ma the master of mayhem and monsters. The ma that's really good. Yeah. If you haven't already trademarked that, James, I think you should. That's Everyone, true. please welcome James Grum. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. How appropriate, welcome. right after Halloween. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. First, first question that we ask everyone when they come on the podcast: Are you a fan of Coolio? Who isn't? Favorite song: Gangsters Paradise or Fantastic Voyage? Which is your favorite song: Gangsters Paradise or Fantastic Voyage? Fantastic Voyage because the movie's really great. Oh, there, there you go. go. All right, good there answer. Go. Good answer. Based on a great book. Yeah. Who wrote that book? Isaac Asimov. Did he write oh. Fantastic Voyage? Did he? Yes, he did. I don't know. I wrote a lot. I wrote. Oh, oh my God. He wrote a lot mind. of books. I wrote a lot of Asimov books. When <laughs> that's, I was a kid. that's the first name that came to my head, and I, now I'm questioning myself. We can look no, it it's up. Totally you know, right. Harrison, Somebody Harrison in the chat will look, look it up and tell us. I, I, I read a lot of Asimov. That might be an early Asimov. Like before he went down the foundation. Yeah, somebody please post if I'm right. Because I. Yeah. I'm down Sarah, very, we're on it. We're on it. Someone's on it. So normally we ask people what their toy story is, but you have such a rich background of of design and sculpting and all kinds of stuff that I don't know if that's really no, the I best think it's question still, to ask. I think that's still like a totally relevant question. Like, okay, let's what, do it. What got you into... Oh, so it, Fantastic Voyage is by Isaac Asimov. Nice. Just okay. to set the record straight. Good, Good job. job, James. Perfect. What got you into toys... And then maybe what got you into designer toys? Because I feel like 
Okay. You feel like that's more the sure. nature of your question, right? Yes. Because you've had, James, you've lived multiple toy lives. Uh, yes, like a cat. Like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> right yes. on. The oh, human cat of design. Um, yeah, actually, uh, when it first, I'd say that the beginnings of it probably were just loving to, when I was a kid, sculpting and drawing and wanting to, <coughs> I'm watching movies, I'm watching TV shows. I grew up on the, in the days of Super Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. You'd have to get up. And if you missed them on Saturday, you didn't get to see them until they had repeats. Yeah, um, me too. I loved that. They should bring that back. They should get amazing. rid of streaming and just have Saturdays, Saturday cartoons. So when I saw a character uh, in the cartoons or then later in the afternoon, they'd have the monster movies um, with uh, all kinds of different horror hosts. And we had Super Host was the guy in the Cleveland area. And he was a guy who kind of dressed as Superman outfit, but he was drunk all the time. It's like- On kind of Saturday like, mornings? Yeah, well, Saturday afternoon. It was after the cartoons. Uh, okay. That, that was the thing is all these kids are watching his show and we're all laughing because he's drunk. He's got a red <laughs> nose and he's and he can't fly because he's too drunk. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, wow, wait, so he, what was his name? I've never heard of this guy. It was Superhost was the, the name of the character. Okay. But the guy who played it was Lynn, uh, Lynn Sheldon. Perhaps. Okay. He was a local guy. He owned a local TV station and he played this guy, Superhost. And he played Harryhausen movies and old yeah. black and white horror movies and B, uh, like Invasion of the Saucerman and She Creature and all that stuff. And when I'd see these things, I remember I used to sit on the floor in front of the TV and I have a big ball of clay and I would make like the she creature. I would sit there and try to make it before the end of the, the movie. And I always have like a book sitting in front of me so I could use it as a stand and kind of build this thing. And uh, then it kind of got to the point where I started to say, what if I made my own movies and I made my own monsters? And I started creating my own characters, sculpting my own designs and stuff like that. And uh, end up, thank God for art when I was in high school, because it's the only reason I passed is because I had art classes. I was in a vocational program where I was in art for literally, you know, most of the day. We were, we would go to class and it was more like graphic design, some illustration, uh, even photography. We'd be there for five um, periods during the course of the day, every day. So that was a majority of my time was spent doing art. Thank God, because like I said, it's the only reason I graduated. And that was in high school. That was in high school. Wow. Did, did they put you into that because you were bad? Because oh, you were cause naughty? You, oh, because you were gifted. Because you were gifted. Because I couldn't do anything else. Because <laughs> <laughs> they had they had vocational uh, auto shop and they had vocational yeah. um, graphic design. They had vo vocational uh, um, like architecture, drafting, that type of yep. thing. I think yeah. hairdressing is always one of them too. Uh, yes. And those were always like, those classes were outside of the building. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was great. I learned a lot in those classes, but like I said, thank God I had them uh, because that was the only thing I was interested in. I was not interested in, in like, unlike most kids, I was un, uninterested <laughs> in English and everything else. Uh, so when I graduated, I, I got a really good job right out of school. Only I was I was taking care of mobile classrooms, these big, huge, giant vans that you kind of uh, drove around. They were classrooms that had to be driven to different schools, and uh, they'd be set up outside the school, and kids would come out special. Kids with special needs or um, gifted kids would come out and use these mobile classrooms to get taught by special teachers. And there was a group of teachers that um, they started to realize I was an artist, and, they, and I, I think I did a Christmas card for everybody. Uh, that were that all the teachers that I worked with. And they said, what the hell are you doing, doing, driving these mobile classrooms around? You need to go to art school. So uh, they helped me find um, different art schools to go to and kind of uh, just check out. I, I went to Philadelphia and Chicago and Columbus and settled on Cleveland Institute of Art here in Cleveland and went there five years, uh, got a bachelor's degree in illustration and a minor in cinematography because I really wanted to do movies. I was really interested in doing film design, designing characters for movies and, and doing concept art. But back in the, the 80s at this school, nobody knew anything about that. They're they all editorial artists and everything. So um, I but I still I wanted to do movies. So I did 
you know, all these movie posters and creature designs and everything. And my teachers didn't know what the heck to do with me because they just didn't understand it. Uh, but when I graduated, um, I, I flew to the West Coast. I interviewed a few places. I had a job offer from a graphic studio, but I didn't really want to do graphics. But I got an interview with American Greetings in Cleveland yeah. when I graduated. And they had that division, those characters in Cleveland. And they are the ones that, you know... Um, creative mad balls and care bears and strawberry shortcake, all that stuff that I did at the very beginning of my career. And they hired me right out of college, which was amazing and put me on mad balls. That was like, right. it was like my first gig. Which is so iconic. And I think that that's what most people know your work from of our generation. I that's for sure. Is I don't know balls. if that's people actually know that it was specifically, James. no, people know that it was you, but I don't think people know specifically which ones you created. Because well, and this is the thing. talk about it specifically. When I say I worked on Mad Balls, I was it had already been launched and they had designs, they just needed people to continue on with new designs and they wanted so Mad Balls was really there's lots of articles that are that have been written and interviewed me, and you know how sometimes a lot of interviewers get things wrong and yeah. they all say Jim Groman, creator of Mad Balls, and right. right and people I work with are like that I used to work with, there's a lot of them are still alive and they're they're like, what? It's not and they call you. <laughs> they're like, James. And they're like, stop taking more like, credit for this. What are you doing, Jimmy? Taking my credit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's um you were just a kid when you came in because I was real, I was pretty young, right out of college. Yeah. Um, but I've tried to keep this the record straight. Like most yeah. toy lines, very rarely any toy line at a major toy company, it's very rare that one person can claim it. Sure. You know, yeah, because it, it's all about the collective. It's all about, you know, uh, a concept might be initiated by someone, but then it starts to mutate. It becomes something else. Yeah. Madball started as a, a hot potato game. They want to do a game where you literally had electronic hot potato that you passed around and everything. Then they put a face on it. And then from there, it mutated to, hey, why do we need to make it a game? Let's make it a, a ball with a face on it. And then I think retailers. Yeah. He said, hey, gross toys are starting to, to get really popular. I want you guys to make some gross faces on them. And so there's so many things that came into play to get those to where they were. And then there were multiple designers that worked yeah. on. Them. So um, there's a couple that maybe I did more design work on than others. Right. Um, but yeah, most of them were like, there were little designs that we started to sign our names on them as they went from person to person. And some of them had like five names on them because someone was like changing this or changing that or adding right. something. It was really fun though. I mean, it's like nothing, there's no one can really claim that idea as their own, but the fact that all these people that uh, worked on it, kind of this collaborative, kind of like a party, it was, it was really cool. That's a really awesome, informative, like first yeah, job I mean, out of the gate. I, I like... think a lot of people, when they introduce you, that's the first thing that they attach to you. But it's like, a small part of how you got started. And like you said, it wasn't your idea. And we've actually on this podcast, we've had so many creators come on who worked at big toy companies. And it's interesting to us because we never did. Mm -hmm. So it's like people come on with real experience. Oh, you, you lost it. Yeah. Um, but you, uh, I mean, I don't want to jump ahead too far and I have other questions, but you transitioned so hard and so deftly into designer toys. I, I don't know if we want to jump right to that, but what happened after Mad Balls? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, and like and 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 what year was Mad Balls? Uh, it was. Um, I graduated in '86, and that's about the time it came out. Okay, passed it through '87, '88. Um, I did a lot of the action figures, like designed bodies for a lot of the characters, and they were like whole lot there were like series of action figures that never were released we did vehicles that were never released for so, the mad balls line yes oh, exactly wow. so there was so much stuff that was never yeah. seen from that original line that um i worked on because i kind of came in after these a bunch of these older guys had already done the first few designs and then i came in to kind of help out i just they they called me and they had got my name from somebody i came in did a couple freelance jobs for them and then they just said I remember the big, the top dog, the VP of the company came walking into a meeting I was in and he just said, hey, you want to work on the inside? We really like your stuff. And I said, I didn't know quite what that meant. 
<laughs> having a full-time job or anything. And yeah. said, no, we want you to work for us. And then it was like, you know, health insurance and yeah. uh, we got bonuses at the end of the year when things did well and everything. So it was a really edu- a real education on what the benefits of working for a company uh, really are. So yeah, that was amazing. But yeah, after I left that division kind of started to dwindle, you know, things started to not sell as well. Lots of ripoffs, companies mm-hmm. coming out with ripoffs yeah. of, of Care Bears and everything. Did and you then, ever work on Care Bears? Oh, yeah. I was, um, I did back then a little bit just as a support artist. They always used to make fun of me. If I did something that was even close to being cute, they had to like pin it up in meetings and go, look at Groman's doing something. <laughs> cute. Like, did, you, did you mainly draw or did you sculpt for them too? Or did, I drew, but then what was so, this is an, I'm, I was so spoiled right out of school. It was a. Uh, if you work at Hasbro, you're you're usually you're a designer, an engineer, a sculptor. Uh, you're in plush. It's very regimented. It's very uh, com- car- compartmentalized. Yeah. And TCFC was very small studio of like maybe twenty artists. You could do anything if you wanted to pitch an idea to the company, sculpt something up. You know, sometimes they wanted to show something to a buyer or something. And they have one of us sculpt something up. There was a really, some really talented sculptors. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Tom Keebler. He's, he's like a world famous sculptor now. And he was one of the guys that we had there. He's a really good friend of mine. Uh, some of his clients are like um, Guillermo del Toro and uh, lots of film directors and everything. He, he does these life size, like mutants and freaks and stuff like that. Um, but so I learned sculpting by watching some of those guys and would sculpt little prototypes. I even did a little Care Bear prototype at one time, uh, which got pinned up on the wall and framed and said, look at this. Grow something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, and, but when that, that division went away, uh, I went freelance and was doing more sculpting. I started to find that it was best for me to be able to design the stuff, sculpt it. We even turned our studio into like a turnkey where we would design. I had like a couple other illustrators that worked with me. Um, we designed it, sculpted it. We would cast up prototypes. We would paint them. We'd get them ready for toy fair and stuff like that. And I just was looking for any of any ways I could make more money from just doing these designs. So um, I started going after model kits. I was doing like uh, styrene, plastic, you know, the ones that come in like hundreds of pieces on the yeah. On screw. Yeah. I did uh, Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton's um, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Headless Horseman. Um, and I did uh, The Mummy from the Brendan Fraser movie. I did a couple Godzilla model kits. Uh, was doing, uh, I did a Rancor and a bunch, so a couple Star Wars characters. So I started getting known for that, but model kits didn't last very long. So right. um all of a sudden, I found myself getting less and less work. Then I went to Hasbro, worked at Hasbro on Star Wars and a, a couple other brands for a while. Loved Hasbro. I, I loved it there. Um, but ended up coming back to Cleveland because they had started up a new division that was going to bring back all the properties, Care Bears, everything. So uh, they brought me back to work on on Madballs again. So it was re-released. Where were you when you were with Hasbro? It was in Rhode Island. Okay. So we lived there like five years. They got yes. you out of Cleveland for, for a minute there. For a minute. <laughs> yeah. But it was a wonderful minute because it, if I'm looking at my career and li- looking at what I needed at that point is, you know, uh, those characters of Cleveland was kind of like a bunch of card guys. They were card designers from American Greetings. Right. Not into toys. So they were learning it. And I was right. learning it with them. Did I know everything? Right. No, we, we knew very little. When I left, I knew how to sculpt and I started to learn a little bit about sculpting, but going to Hasbro was like, you sat in a meeting with engineer, every meeting you had about a toy was engineers, marketing, um, the price, all the people that were the price engineers that everything had to come in at a certain price, packaging, um, sometimes sculptors. But every you you'd see every aspect of the business. So it was a major you could fire a pricing engineer. And spend more money on the toy. <laughs> oh, just joking. Sorry, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Yeah. Or, yeah, but but that was that was amazing because then learning materials because yeah. certain materials were cheaper than others. Right. Uh, 
So you have this really big toy that you're, you want to make it out of styrene plastic, but it's going to cost, you know, $250,000 for tools. Mm-hmm. You make yeah. it out of like rotocast and all of a sudden it's like one third the price. And all those things were like, uh, I, I felt like, boy, right job at the right time. It's almost like they got me in there for five years. I learned all this awesome stuff. Then I had an opportunity to come back to Cleveland and yeah. apply it to these properties that I had worked on you know, years and years before. So I was back on uh, Mad Balls and uh, I, can't, I, I think I felt like being back on Mad Balls, it was time for me to start using Mad Balls to get my name out beyond American Greetings and beyond the business world, start to build my own name up. So I started to do a lot of gallery shows where I do paintings of the Mad Balls and everything. And my wife would always come to me and go, you know what? There's so much more to you than Mad Balls. You should be doing your own stuff. And I'd be going, well, watch me. It's like, we're going to do Mad Balls for a little while. And then eventually hope, hoping that people would start asking me, you know, for my own stuff. And eventually uh, Luke uh, um, Rook at Lulu Bell mm-hmm. contacted me, um, got my email from somebody and, uh, he asked me if I wanted to do a toy for him and we went back and forth a few times and I pitched him Rotten Rex, which is right sitting right in front of you, the glow in the dark. Was figure. that like 2009? Oh boy. Um, probably 2000, 2009, 2010. Cause I believe Rotten Rex was released in 2014. It took a few, few years for him to actually make it onto the market. Yeah. Um, this one glows like ooh. so crazy. It sits on the top shelf Probably, of our cases, yeah. and you can see it from the opposite side of the we, street. It's called, yeah, that's super glow. It's called oh. super glow, and it's like really awesome. It's like great. the grandkids all have one. So is it um light light it strontium? It's just straight up nuclear. It's yeah. Just, it's just, yeah. Yes. It's just Don't hold it too up. close to your chest. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. the, the other thing that I want to say about this figure is how crazy the sculpt is in that you've sculpted every single part of this toy, including the bottom of the feet. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up, but there's texture and sculpt and design on every aspect. There it is. There's his feet. I thought you were going to say his sphincter because he does. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> it's close up on that too. But no, I'm talking about his feet. Isn't that, that's the cloaca. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Bird terms. Well, like hey, every, I, I, I have to show you guys sometimes. Luke, Luke? We never released one, but Luke actually made one that's out of pink vinyl, and it's like dog toy vinyl, and it's got a squeaker in the sticker. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> that's really great. Well, we should have made them. Yeah, so, I like the size of this, too. It's ginormous. So you went to Hasbro and got basically a master class or like a, you know, a graduate degree in toy designing, and then you came back to Cleveland is there a big scene in Cleveland uh, for, for arts and? Actually, yes. And it's, and you have to credit American Greetings being a staple of the community for years and years and years. It draws, it was of course drawing artists into the area yeah. for full-time jobs. I mean, employed hundreds of artists. Amazing. Um, still does. Uh, and then we used to have a toy company in town called Cap Toy and Cap Toy used to make like uh, candy toys, like the spin pop mm-hmm. and uh, the glow pop and all these different lollipops and candies and stuff. And I worked for them uh, doing freelance for yeah. a long time. I worked on Stretch Armstrong for them because they, they got Stretch Armstrong at one time. And nice. I redesigned Stretch Armstrong for them. And I actually sold them a candy idea. I brought in an idea one day and uh, it was called Fossil Pops. And it's actually a lollipop that you hold a dinosaur's tail and when you lick the lollipop down, there's a skeleton of a dinosaur on the inside. Oh, and, that's cool. And is that illegal like, now? What's that? Is that illegal now? Choking hazard? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it may be. They're, yeah, they're a lot more careful now than they were. Yeah. yeah. And that sounds dope, but I'm just imagining giving it to my kid and being like, where'd the fossil go? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 911. Yeah. yeah. So you actively engineered your way into the designer toy scene. You knew what you wanted. Were you trying to be, you wanted to make more toys. And so did you see the designer toy scene out there and you wanted to get into that or you were interested in the arts and you wound up in designer toys? Well, I had started to get aware of the, of designer toys mostly because, and this, some of this stuff's coming back to me. 
It's like we yeah. take your time. <laughs> let it let it all, all let it all marinate back up. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was at Hasbro working full time, and American Greetings. While I was at Hasbro, American Greetings, they would approach me and fly me in and offer me a job. Was enough money? Wasn't the right position, so I wouldn't take it. Go back to Hasbro. They they tried to get me to come back a couple times. Uh, one of the times I got to know a couple of the people that were working there, some of the new people, and I, I started to do freelance for them. And they wanted to get into the designer toy uh, um, genre. And they and I wasn't really aware of it. I had seen some stuff when I was at Hasbro. I'd go into like, um, they would ha they have, uh, what are the toy stores there? Um, in Rhode Island? Island? Yeah, there's that big chain of, it oh, FYE, maybe? Like, no, no, uh, FYE wasn't carrying toys yet. Uh -huh. uh, oh, like KB Toys? toys? Comics. Man, was Newberry it, Comics? No, maybe KB Toys? Uh, Newberry Comics? Yeah. Newberry yeah. was in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, that yeah. makes sense, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. That, that was it. And yeah. they had designer toys. And I started yeah. to see, I bought a couple. Um, and so uh, all of a sudden, Merit and Greetings, some of the people there wanted to get into the designer toy. Th they're like many of the larger toy companies that say, Hey, this is, this is starting to happen. We want to get involved in it. Everything that designer toys is not, you know, mm -hmm. so they, they hired me to do a care bear. And so I did this little care bear design and, Oh no, wait a minute. I did not do the design. There was a, an artist, a very well-known artist there that was working for American greetings. Now he's a big wig in animation and stuff, but he designed this little care bear with lightning bolts under his arms. He's a, it's a grumpy bear. And mm -hmm. so I sculpted it. And I sourced it overseas because I started to get to know some of the factories from working at Hasbro. Right. Uh, sourced it for them, manufactured it and everything. And that was probably my first real experience with designer toys, which I kind of forgot about. It's kind of forgot that even happened. So you could almost say that might have been my first foray. What kinds of toys were, um, were they presenting? Like, what were you guys looking at and going, oh, these are cool? What were some of the first things that you remember them Showing Actually, I'm not aware of what they were looking at. I think, yeah. oh, um, Uncle. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And, well, another thing that happened was that um, they actually had Uncle, the guys from Uncle, flew in to American Greetings, and they licensed Tinpo from Uncle, and we did a number of little animated shorts with uh, Tinpo characters. It's This is crazy, but... Um, something else I don't talk about very often because it's on the BBC network is Tim Poe from uncle actually was turned into these little, these little shorts that, that ran on NBC on Saturday mornings. Okay. I wrote a couple of them and uh, we redesigned the characters a little bit, but you know, of course the uncle guys got royalties. Um, and then just in the last four years, they licensed Tinpo to the BBC, and BBC has a Tinpo series running right now. It's That's it's actually cool. some of the vehicles that I design and everything are all on the show, which is really cool. But wow. yeah, man, it, I think that was the thing that really inspired them, is they saw um, that they love the Uncle stuff. They loved all those designs. And I remember seeing, I'm trying to remember some of their characters um, that were in their lines, but that stuff was all over the American greeting studios. So they really did want to get into that market. Yeah. Um, and even when they got me to come back there, they still wanted to get in, get into it. But I think they found it wasn't as big as they needed it to be. They needed to license yeah. their stuff to Hasbro and Mattel and the big boys. So designer vinyls just didn't bring in the revenue that they needed to bring in. Absolutely. Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then, so at, at some certain point after that, you then met Luke. Was there anything in between that and you meeting Luke that you designed? Were you making your own character well, at that point? Or was the first, is this your first designer toy? That was pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Designer, well, I did a replacement head for, um, it was Cure had done the boogie, the boogie, woogie boogie man or oogie boogie man or, or am I thinking like, a um, Christmas. 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 They, they had like a little it was called the boogeyman and they had a bunch of artists do replacement heads for it and i did one of the replacement heads 
was the yeah. very first thing I did for Luke. The right. reason I forget about it all the time is because I did the sculpt, sent it overseas, didn't hear anything for two years. All of a sudden got online one day and there it was. People were selling it. And everything, and I didn't know what happened. Yeah. Um, and then Luke approached me about Rotten Wreck or about doing another toy. And, I, and that's when we came up with a contract and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so I did a sign, a sign a contract and I got a royalty off of sales and stuff. But um, so we agreed on, I, I showed them a number of things, but we both centered on Rotten Rex as being the thing we really wanted to do. It's very cool. Was this the first dinosaur you'd made at all? Or had you made previous dinosaurs for the company? Yeah, I had sculpted a, a lot of dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah. I had done one for, I pitched an idea to a company that did museum toys where it was literally like um, a half T-Rex where one half is all sculpted scales and everything. The other half is all bones and skeleton and stuff for kind of like a museum piece to be yeah. sold in museums. And so that kind of was somewhat the inspiration uh, for Rotten Rex, but it's just a zombie, a zombie T-Rex. How can you go wrong? Exactly. Yeah. Have you always been into like horror and, you know, blood and guts and monsters and that kind of stuff? Has that always been an inspiration to you? Uh, yeah, it, it, it actually has. I'm not so much, you know, zombies and horror, even though I've just kind of fallen into it. Now that's what everybody wants. It's like, yes. uh, do you want to do the creature in Black Lagoon? Oh, I'd love to. Could you make him a zombified version? I'm like, no, no, I want to do the creature in Black Lagoon. So I, it is now that a lot of people, are, that's what they want right. from me. And I, tr I try to get away from it, but, you know, keeps dragging me back in, as they like, say. You like that musician that doesn't want to play that hit song. <laughs> I still do enjoy doing it. It's just that, um, like my wife had said about Mad Balls, it's like there's more to you than just doing Mad Balls. It's like want to do some other stuff. So you pigeonhole yourself, pigeonhole yourself a little bit. A little bit. Well, and, and it's partly because Rotten Rex came out and was very popular, and still is being sold. I mean, to this day, they're still doing new runs of them, and. Uh, and then that led to King Corpse, which was even bigger. Right. Uh, right. Let's talk about that. How how did King Corpse come about? How did you start working with Instinct Toy? And that, that all came about from uh, Rotten Rex. Lulu Bell was set up at Designer Con, and I'm trying to think which show it was. I think it was one of the first shows that was for a full weekend rather than just one day. Yeah. Um, and so Hiroto uh, Okubo and his team were set up right next to Lulu Bell. And it was, so it was uh -huh. kind of destiny. It was really, yeah. I, there's no other way to look at it because he wanted, I had a couple painted Rotten Rexes there and he wanted that, this full color, fully painted Rotten Rex so bad. And they had a lottery and he won the lottery. Uh -huh. So he said, he gave me a gift of one of his uh, characters. Um, and then we stayed in touch after that. And he said, you want to do something for me? And I had already kind of pitched uh, Lulu Bell the idea of doing this gorilla character. And yeah. um, they, like Luke did, he wanted to go in a different direction and stuff, but I still want to do this gorilla. I thought it was like King, King Kong's my favorite movie. I, I like a gorilla character and a dinosaur, you know, they can fight and all that stuff. Thought that'd be fun. Um, so what's crazy is, uh, Hiroto said, he sent me an email and he goes, we'd love to see you do a gorilla, like a zombie gorilla. And I'm like, that's exactly what I want to do. So it, once again, it was, it was beautiful. So um, did a bunch of designs, agreed on the design, did some, uh, did the sculpture, sent the sculpture. We did a 3D scan of the sculpture rather than send a sculpture itself. And we so you have sculpted this? Yes. What kind of clay do you use? It's super sculpy. Super it's sculpy. Craft clay. I've tried waxes. I've tried castelline. I've tried all kinds of stuff. Monster clay I really love, but you can't really ship it very yeah. easily. So uh, I still love super sculpy. It's what I what I really learned with was super sculpy, and I've just stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. As as part of the process, sometimes I, people send that as their final sculpt, and we have to be like, please don't. No, no. <laughs> so I think it's, I think it's interesting. That instinct toy, that hero. I mean, Hiroto obviously fell in love with you and your work because it's so different than what instinct toy makes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's like you're like an outlier, but it's really yeah. from like from just his passion for your work, which is really incredible. I never think about that so much, like 
Yeah, it's just like Instinct Toy is such an amazing toy maker. So they did the most incredible job with your work. But like, damn, you were you were you were lucky that he fell in love with you right there. And that's why I was like, I'm going to make this. Yeah, it's like an amazing artist himself. And you just nailed it that it was probably to both of our benefit that he did something so different than me. You know, so it's not like he's he's like we're competing with each other. He's got his own sensibilities, his own type of work that he does with a specific style. My yeah. stuff was so different and he did like it. And he, I think that was his ultimate goal was he wanted to start working with other artists and he has yeah. since then. So uh, I, I guess I was kind of what kind of led him in that direction, which I think is, yeah, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that, the, for the relationship, which is still ongoing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We still have projects in the works and stuff and still th- some new stuff coming and, um, they, and when I, I always say this, when I, when I talk about, uh, Hiroto is that you send him a sculpture and I can't wait to see what he does with it because it very, he'll, he'll come back and he'll say, you know, like King corpse, it's like, let's make the rib cage come off yeah. you know? and right. let's make a, a heart that comes out of the chest. Yeah. And I had sculpted the chains and the manacles on his arm. He said, let's make them a separate part, you know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it just becomes so much more. That's amazing because you know, from uh, I'll put on my price engineer hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's going to cost us more. <laughs> yeah. You could work at Hasbro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, or fortunately, not the job I want. So, yeah, it's like all these parts, like, my God, it's so great. It's so cool. How long did it take you to sculpt the original? Um, it, Generally, I I usually tell clients two months, mm-hmm. um, and that's mostly because I very rarely go. I can't work two months on any one job. Sure. I have to take other clients' work and design jobs that come in and everything. So I like to be able to not work on one job and forget about all my other clients because you know what happens? They forget about you. <laughs> if you forget about them, right? They find someone else. Yes. Yeah. So I like to juggle. I like to have multiple things going. And so I would say hour wise, you're probably talking. Um, eh, could be 200 plus hours. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It shows. Yeah, so detailed. It's, it's interesting because uh, we had a show just this month with Clav. I don't know if you're familiar with Clav. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he, he the best he rock out there. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, he's great. Yeah. He did he such too. a fantastic job, but honestly, I don't think I had seen Half all the detail. detail yeah. Till he painted it cuz I mean, I've owned this one for yeah. years now. It's hard on a blank. It's hard on a blank. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And but I've also I've seen some of the other colorways that Lulu Bell has pulled over the years and if I had had more money at those times, I would have bought more. But that's just the way it goes. But when Clab painted those, it was like, holy yeah, shit. It's true. Yeah. So. All the details. Yeah. Amazing. He's done, he's done some King Corpses that are just blow away. I know he actually has a King Corpse tattoo on his leg. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. I noticed that. I get sidetracked he, by the guy. He's got yeah. tattoos on his leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just got some, that, the random New Haven tattoo yeah. that he has. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's a really good tattoo, too. It made me, I was tempted to get one myself. Oh. You, do you, are you tattooed? I have nothing. No. no oh, so that's oh, what you need to five do. points. We're gonna have to tattoo. Get you a King Corpse tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those guys that always. I'm always like, yeah, I'm gonna get a tattoo on these dates. But yeah. I'll pin you down. So you have just the most amazing energy. I think you just come across as uh, so happy to be involved in the scene. It's like. Uh, I think it's a testament to you that you like, you know, a lot of people consider you like the mon- the master of monsters, but hanging out with you, you're always just so chill. So like, what do you attribute your ability to stay just, you know, young at heart? Well, it's my job um, is that, you know, creating things and, uh, creating things. I like working for companies and them giving me a challenge of some kind. I, I like being challenged by something. Um, it seems like you can get into a rut real easy, but it seems like just in the last few months, I've been giving pro- given projects that are challenging to me and I love it. 
sometimes I mess up. I, I messed up a sculpt so bad today that <laughs> I for a couple hours trying Please to tell, this is so good. How did you mess it up? Because you know that we all sit like we all sculpt and we work on it. And we're like, I'm never going to finish this sculpt. And we just like literally don't even ever finish it. Well, that's another thing that I've learned over the years is like you can get the I get my armature all built and everything. And then I start to lay that first layer of clay on it and stuff. And then I start to detail like the head. And all of a sudden I hate it. And I'm like, I'm doing something wrong, but you got to wait. You got to give it a chance to get that whole armature covered up, start seeing the proportions. Then if you, the proportions are all laid in and it looks bad, then you got to worry, but you you can't give up too soon is a number one. Uh, Thinking that it's going the wrong way too early. I I think that happens with a lot of people. What happened with me today was I, I have a character I'm working on for Mondo that, um, I guess they told me I could mention it. It's Godzilla and oh. I'm doing, it's kind of my version of Godzilla only. It's kind of based on like a multiple different ones that appeared in movies and stuff. Oh, and it's that's <laughs> crazy. And kind so of all excited. the Romanisms and stuff in it. Uh, and I, I kept re-sculpting. I have a specific drawing I did. I do design drawings for everything that I work on and I couldn't quite get the face right. And I, I ripped it off, put it back. And then I, redid my armature from my head, put it back on, kept sculpting. And I'm like, it still does not, the proportions are off. Things aren't working. My shapes aren't working. And I used ball bearings for the eyes, right? Yeah. And I had these certain size ball bearings. They're like uh, half an inch round. And I had them in the eyes. I'm going, why is the face proportions not working? And I'm looking and I'm looking, looking at my drawing. I popped the ball bearings out, went to a size bigger like five eighths of an inch stuck them in. That was what was throwing it off. Uh It's because the eyes being too small on the face was making the whole thing look wrong. It didn't match my drawing. The minute that eye got bigger proportions all fell into place. There you go. The same amount of space. It was so stupid. I was like, come on. Why did I pick that ball bearing? It's like, I should have picked us. You know how an eyeball sits inside the socket. You only see part of it. Yeah. So I was not measuring correctly when I grabbed the ball. I have tons of ball bearings. I just grabbed the wrong size. But it's such a, a silly thing that I ripped my face up, um, apart t- twice <laughs> right? before I realized that was what was throwing me off. And oh, it was that crazy. Sounds like we all do that oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, it's, it's really cool to hear that you struggle. So we had a, uh, a question, too, from the crowd. I'm curious. Uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite toy that you sculpted? Wow. Um, yeah, I get that question a lot. It's that's a that is really tough. Uh, um, I, I, I might say King Corpse. King Corpse was, it was a, an epiphany for me. All of a sudden things just fell in, in place. It's probably one of the most successful figures I've worked on, I have to say. Um, you know, winning the Toy Award, Toy of the Year was amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's just is in demand like crazy. We've done multiple releases. I think most people know me for that toy. Um, I might say that's that's up there. And King Kong being one of my favorite movies of all time, it was kind of my, you know, ode to that film when I did that figure. Yeah. So that that one has that's like a landmark piece in so many ways. I might have to say that one. It's amazing. So I guess <laughs> I want to know is how do you stop? Because you, you you sculpt every single detail. So how do you stop yourself sculpting? And when you've made something like these, do you look at them and be like, oh, I wish I'd have just added that extra tooth or like that extra line there? Or do you just yeah. walk away? Absolutely. It's like uh, uh, I teach at the school I was talking about earlier, Cleveland Institute of Art. I teach there too. I teach like one day a week. I teach a character design class and everything. I always tell the students, it's like, uh, there, I can't remember what artist was the first one to say it, but it's like, art really is never finished ever. It's just abandoned by the artist. And it's, I, I don't know if, who it was yes. that said that, but yes. it's, you, I always tell them, you know what, when a piece of art is finished and they ask what, when it's due, that's when it's finished. <laughs> right. yes, that's you know, true. You know, you know that's when it has to go true. in and I try to spend as much time on it as possibly can, but there comes a time where it's, you know, you got to walk away from it. And it's, it's so weird. I'll be working on 
you know, a chest. And I'll be going at it. I'm going, man, this is going to take me forever. And you're going, you're going. But all of a sudden, you do that last cut and you go, my, my head just clicks. It's done. It's, yeah. it's, it's like a really weird thing. It's like I just, all of a sudden, it just w- washes over me that it's done. Move on to the next piece. Not sit there and stare. You know, I will stare at it. I still will come down there and spin it around and everything. But you kind of almost have to know I got to spend. There's just so much time I can spend on this piece. And at what point are you just beating it into the ground? Right. But that's also years of experience. You know, it's not, it's no. not just that. I know like my, the, the thing that I know right. from, just from this conversation that's sure. different between some of the processes that I know we've been through yeah. and we've seen – you start, James, with a drawing. Right. And you're always t- kind of truing yourself to a vision that you've sort of shook hands on either with yourself or with someone else, but like, this is what I'm going for. Yep. But, you know, a lot of times when we sit down to create, we literally sit down with a, a lump of clay. Right. And we start. And who the hell knows when it's done? Because there was no handshake at the beginning about right. what it was we're supposed to be making. Ah, uh, that's a good so point. So yeah. I'm yeah. just realizing that in this conversation myself, that that's a good thing to. So is this advice that we'd give to all toy designers is to lay it out on paper for us now? Is that? I mean, well, Jesus Christ. Is that, is, what do you give your students advice when they sit well, down to create a character? I'm gonna tell you, just listening yeah. to you say that, that sounds freaking wonderful. Like sitting down and just <laughs> saying, "What am I gonna? What's this clay gonna become?" You know. That's kind of, it's kind of cool. Weird. I don't think I yeah. could do it. That That's what I right. do. And it gets me into weird situations. <laughs> really, you know, str- you know, st- strange situations. <laughs> strange situations. So one thing that I did want to bring up, and it's interesting because I see them sitting on your. Well, I oh, okay, 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 okay. I okay, wanted okay. to answer okay. the question okay. about, about um, what the advice you'd give your students. Oh, oh yeah. What, so when you go to teach and you're teaching character design, what's the advice that you give to your students when they first start designing characters? Oh, uh, yeah. And I try to, you know, designing characters at an art school. In, you know, in the illustration department is where I work. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it's all commercial. It's applied arts. Okay. You got to work for somebody. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of my students maybe they'll end up working for themselves someday. Like it took me years to get to the point where I'm totally self sufficient and can work for myself and run my own business and everything. A lot of them are going to go to companies and work. I always tell them that a number one, it's like you got to you got to be professional and you got to. When you design a character, you got to design it so, like, if you're going to do it for animation, you got to design a character for animation that other people can draw because animation is a collaborative art. Mm-hmm. You got to design something that a sculptor can sculpt, you know, if you're going to yeah. do a turn of that character for a toy. So you got to know how everything looks and you got to design it to a point where it's actually functional and will work as a sculpt or as an action figure or whatever. But the A number one thing. I tell my students is if you're do if you're going to design a character, like say someone says, you know, I want you to do a Batman and they give you free reign, do it better than do it as cool and as different as, as you can, because uh, it's all about um, being as an original as you can doing, bringing something to the table that no one's seen before, I think is really important. It's something I try to do. Even when I'm working on a licensed character, I want to do something that, Someone looks at it and goes, wow, I've never seen someone do that before with that character. I think that's something fresh and something new and something imaginative. That's really good advice. And I think that a lot of people would try to say, keep it separate. If you're going to work for a company, keep your ideas for yourself. But you are given quite the opposite idea and just saying, give your all to everything and try and be the best you can be in every situation. Yes, because I, that's another thing is... Not to say that I didn't work for companies where I go, I have this, I have this great idea. I might hold on to this one. Sure. I have done that. I've done it. Um, but there's also, uh, if you're truly a creative person, I don't think, if you're really a creative person, you're not a bottomless, you are a bottomless pit. I think you should, okay, I gave them a bunch of great ideas, but I got more. You know, right. I, most creative people that I've met, they have ideas. They continually come up with ideas. One thing drives another. And sometimes we might look back and go, why did I show that idea to Hasbro? What the hell was I thinking? I should have held on to it for myself. 
but yeah, it's like you also, if you committed to working for a company that's paying you to come up with ideas, you want to give them good ideas. You can't yeah. hold on to everything and just give them crap, you know? So, and that's right. all building reputation as a toy designer. You want to build a reputation of doing good stuff. Absolutely. And it, the experience helps you too. Every time you design something and make something and create something, you learn every time you learn something about yourself and about your design and about process and everything. Yep. So it's important. What were you going to say? You have like 12 questions like itching to I come just, out. Right? I just know that like, <laughs> you know, this work is sort of your dream space and it's, it's not licensed. We all know where it comes from but it's taking it somewhere that it never was in that space. And, it, and, 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 and if you pitched it, the answer would have been no. And that's, you know, so this was, you made this. And then there's licensed work that I've seen people make and it doesn't really strike the same chord. So that's kind of what, what's flooding over me as you're talking is I know, you know, I've seen licensed work that you've made and other people have made that's, like doesn't have the same resonance because there's, you know, that corporate barriers. But, but I would say that. that and, and, not, and no one yeah. held you back. I just think that sometimes it's like, that. not every, not every swing is a, is a home run. Yeah. And then, into sports analogies on a toy show, but. And I think it's happening more and more at places like Hasbro and stuff where they say, Hey, take the star Wars license and, you know, let's come up with a whole new shape for the characters or let's do it for, preschool make their you know kind of do chibi style or something and right. so there is room now that's starting to happen more and more with, yeah. with companies which is you know then you can get a little bit more creative but when you do obi-wan kenobi it's got to look like obi-wan kenobi people got to know who that character is so those right. are some of the constraints right I, I i was lucky enough to get to do something with dc yeah i mean so and so james i i, I don't want to talk of, i don't want to put words in james's mouth but I'm just going to say, I, I double cast a resin Batman for DC. And I remember the day that they put it on there, I was so excited and proud of it. And they put it on their Instagram feed. And literally, I was so in love with my sculpt. I was so happy with it. It was so pure for me. And people were like, this is the biggest dog shit. <laughs> they were like, this and it was is like a hundred thousand. I've never had a post with a hundred thousand comments. About this. I've never had a hundred, I mean, you know, if we get like a hundred comments, we're like, woo. And I just remember just like, what, who let this happen? <laughs> it wasn't all like that. You've it, just like caught on to the bad. No, ones. it was bad. It was bad. And the guy who let us in got fired. No, I'm joking. No, he, didn't. he moved on. He moved on. <laughs> Jim Fletcher's no, the man. Jim, yeah, but Jim's Jim the man. Gave Jim's, 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 Jim's yeah. still at DC. Still Is he yeah. still at DC? Yeah. Still I think they, but he, they moved him to a different. No, the. DC got bought out, so he's not yeah. in the same position. He's not in the same position. He's not in the same position of control that he had with the with the licenses and yeah. things now. But yeah, I think he's worked with Mc, like Todd McFarlane's company. Got like he's doing all the Batman figures and yeah. stuff now, which is amazing. But mm -hmm. I think Jim works really closely with him. It's I think it was the idea that I don't want to. This is not knowledge I have. It's what I yeah. guess happened. Yeah. This is like why do we have this company that's like paying for all this stuff to be made? Just just license it. Let's yeah. just have someone else make it and we just approve it. That's just a lot yeah. of companies. That's they'd rather just license their characters out and not right. have to manufacture. So, uh, but they gave you talking about constraints of licenses for Batman. They gave you pretty good free reign with, with what you did. It seems because they're very much your style of sculpts, all of the Batman villains that you did. Yeah. And, and, King Corpse led to that too. That was at five points. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jim's Jim Fletcher came we, over. Yeah. And, oh, I love Jim. We, yeah. We, they, we Jim I tell that story uh, all the time that he came over and he said, "Yeah, we'd love to work with you on something." I'm like, uh, "You're DC collectible?" And he goes, "Yeah." And I, I'm like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> 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 you don't want me anywhere near any of your characters. I go, but yeah. Swamp Thing and all that stuff. I'd love to do them. The Demon, which is an old Jack Kirby character. Um, I would have loved to do done those. And that was kind of where we were going at first, but no, when they said Batman, I was so excited. Cause I said, yeah. they really want to let me do what I want to do. You know, and Jim, Jim's a nut. He, he's like, oh, he's great. He's one of the most creative, fun, anything goes. Yes. Guys. That's a creative person to me. That's a, that's a person who should be in charge of creative people. Yeah. yeah. Everybody should follow him on Instagram because he wears the best outfits too. Yes. 
Jim yes. Fletcher. It's like Jim Fletcher FX or GX or something. You'll find, You'll find him. him. You'll find him. <laughs> Search for Jim Fletcher wearing like a Joker costume. Yeah. He's You'll awesome. He's he great. Yeah, he, I'm sending sketches into him and everything. And my first initial sketch is that those figures changed very little from those first Amazing. sketches. That's so, awesome. Um, that was I. That was an amazing project, I have to say. And I got there were plenty of people just coming online and saying, "Oh, that's not for me." <laughs> oh, why don't you just do your own line? Don't do bad. Were they that, that polite? Maybe that's not for me. That's not, that's not what this. <laughs> do you feel like maybe corporate barriers are good for certain characters? Like, may, you know, I kind of feel like maybe Batman's just Batman. Like he should, you know, like well. If you I, take him away from what he is, is it still interesting to the fans? Right. And that was, that's, we, a lot of times with toy companies, you refer to it as the DNA of the character. It's like right. you twist that DNA too far. Um, then, you know, when you've gone too far or we should know when we've gone too far, but Batman, I, I like the character I respect the character. I knew whatever I was going to do was still within. I mean, I came up with a storyline. We pitched a comic um, to them. We did five spec pages to show a storyline that led to Batman looking like that. Mm -hmm. Still had his basic ideals of being of what Batman was. And, and we had like a, we had stuck to those, or at least I thought I adhered to them enough that, yeah, he was a mutated Batman, but I didn't turn him into, you know, anything other than, a mutated human being that just still yeah. happens to wear this ripped up Batman outfit. Uh, Killer Croc still Killer Croc. He just looks a little different. Is more like has mutated even beyond the point you've ever seen him before. So I did. I still and Joker's like nuts. He's like a fun house. He's got every possible thing you can throw at him. Was was on there, and that's what the Joker is. He's a nut. He's insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To me, it all worked. That all worked without going too far. I didn't make them something other than what. The source material was i don't think yeah <laughs> maybe maybe not I'm, now that i think about the characters it's like yeah maybe i did go too far but <laughs> <laughs> i i thought i thought i was adhering to it too and jim pushed me further and oh. so whatever yeah and i worked with a guy trevor zamet who was there trevor was a guy that grew up in the cleveland area he used to come to my studio when he was a young guy and when I started sending sketches in the gym, uh, Trevor came into Jim's office and said, Hey, I know that guy. And uh, <laughs> so Jim Fletcher goes, well, you're working with him now. You're the art director. And so I worked with this guy that I knew since he was a kid um, cool. on the Batman awesome. figures and stuff. And, and Trevor's a great toy designer and he was throwing me all kinds of ideas and stuff like that to be like uh, tweak this or tweak that, or that's not going to pull out of a mold <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so he was, yeah, it was, it was still somewhat collaborative, but they said no. At one point, I think Trevor did say, take it further. He goes, go go more nuts. You're going in a good direction. Don't hold back. That's, what he awesome. Said. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. at least they're positive, you know, and, and helpful. So there is a project that I wanted to bring up. <laughs> How much of that are you going to talk about? I don't know. I just thought it would be fun <laughs> to bring it up publicly and talk about it because it was a weird experience. And I think it... Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting to to just sort of talk about our different perspectives on designing toys. I see on your shelf you have the Go Gorilla. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Is that, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yes, I forgot about the yes, yeah. right. So very, we don't even have one. Yeah, we don't have one. No. Very rarely in our, so, you know, it, it's so crazy to have this conversation with you because first of all, you know, you're talking, all, your whole conversation is from, even just from like the applied arts perspective, I have to, we have to make things for people yeah. and for companies that give a shit. And it's like, we're literally compared to that conversation. We're pirates. <laughs> we're just out here making designer toys, running a gallery. We have a festival. Like there's very few people, there's very few guardrails. Yes. And we were approached by this company years ago now. I don't remember. This is totally oh pre-pandemic. Right by this company. I think they're called Go Gorilla. Yep. And they said, hey, we want to make a gorilla toy. And we're like, well, wow, that sounds really cool. We, we love gorillas. We love gorillas. Let's make, yeah. let, that's cool. 
who should design it? And they were like, well, we've heard about this guy named James Groman. And so we're like, oh, we, I think I could send that email and have that conversation. So we looped you in and you were like, yeah, I'd love to design a gorilla for this company. And, and it was that mascot too, right? It was so, going to be the mascot yeah. for the company. But I was like, if we play our cards right, we can make an actually really cool toy, even if it's a mascot for a company, it doesn't matter. It could transcend. And so you did, you came onto the project, you were amazing. And, and you completed the project because you're amazing. Um, we, we took it pretty far with you. You did all these really cool designs. Really cool designs. Yeah. And we were super excited to actually get to make this, this toy with this you, toy with as you. Well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we were really excited about it, really excited about it. And then as we went down the design road, it became very clear that our counterparts at the Go Gorilla company wanted to uh, poll the design choices. They were asking lots of people their thoughts on different aspects of the toy. And we were really adamant that it has to come from the heart. This is maybe where we're insane. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We were like, we're not feeling the design that you're picking, and you're asking. I don't. I don't want to impugn people, but you know, they were just asking people, and we were like, we're really not resonating with some of the choices that you want to make here, and so we bowed out. We did. Of and we've. I don't think we've ever done that before. No. We were literally like, we felt like. I'm sure there's more to the story that we don't. I don't. Yeah. Too, I don't but. know. All I know is just like to the point that we sent the email like, hey. You go, you guys, you carry on without you it. You carry on without, yeah. Like, but like he kept changing his mind too. I remember sitting on the phone with him for hours and he'd have one conversation and then be like, oh, I'll change your mind. I've polled my brother and my sister and my friends down the road and they've decided that they like the steroid gym going gorilla or whatever it was. Whatever, yeah, whatever it was. <laughs> I don't even know what if I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to hear what you, if you did. I mean, maybe this question: Did you think we were insane, or what did you think? How did it go to for you? Honest, to be honest, I'm. I don't remember. Part of why I, I might have. I, there's like I always tell people: You guys were talking about how positive I am and everything. I think it's why I lasted in the toy industry. Is I thank God for that. I think it's my parents' upbringing and everything. It's like they were just always positive, positive people. Yeah. And I'm a very positive person that I don't get, I don't get down in, I don't, there's what I, there's things I don't need to know. And I, I got an idea. Something happened with you guys that I didn't want to stick my nose into and start going, what happened? What did he do? What did you yeah. do? What did they do? What's yeah. going on? And I kind of just stepped, I, I was, I had started this thing. He had picked one of the de multiple designs that I had done. So uh, just thought I'll see it off to the end. Then when it went overseas, I don't know if you guys had heard what happened with, no. uh, with this toy is that um, I can't remember what the factory was that he actually went to, but the factory looked at the design and goes, this is a Jim Groman toy. And, <laughs> and yeah. And they go, we'll take 60 of them. Uh. <laughs> and so he went, Hmm, you know, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll make a whole bunch of them. And that's where that went. And I, I got a bunch because I, I know Benny from Tenacious, Tenacious yes. Toys yes. ordered a bunch of them. And yeah. um, I still have like a big box of them in the basement that I sell, you know, one here and there off of my website, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, in fact, I own I owe Benny some money because I've sold a couple of them in the last couple months. So, um, but yeah, that's <laughs> kind of it, it had a life of its own. But what I found was it was so different than most of my other work. You know, we are, I don't want to say a victim of, you know, what we're known for, but in some ways I am, but I thank God for it because it's what I love to do, you know? Yeah, but, absolutely. You know, I do, I have done cute characters. I was the art director on Care Bears when I was in American Greetings, when I wasn't doing Mad Balls, I was the art director on the Care Bears animated show on Netflix and stuff. So I do cute stuff too, but nobody wants to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't that it was cute. I think that the guy was just very difficult to work with and he had you do so many revisions that it was frustrating us to keep going back to you yeah. and with more and more changes 
because that's frustrating when you're working with an artist, especially when he kept flip-flopping his ideas. And yeah. then we wanted to do things like, well, make the glasses removable so that you can change them out. It doesn't have to be that character. And I guess Kyle made a good point. It's like, well, if we were going to release it and put our name on it, we had to be about the project. Yeah. And we what... started it as like, well, let's make it a cool toy that can be in the market that isn't just your logo. Because we're not interested yeah. in just making your logo. We'll make it interested in making it a cool actual... character. Right. And I think that every time we tried to get away from or even stylize what the perception of the logo was, he would just like bring it back to that. And so we'd have to be like, well, we're not trying to recreate that. I think that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it kept trying to get into this like New Jersey buff, like Jim going gorilla. And we're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so Yeah. Like, and, I, right. I think, and I think that's where the toy designer, the uh, professional toy designer part of me, the Hasbro part of me, the toy company part of me kicked mm -hmm. in where, you know, I, I've lived both those worlds. I've lived that world where someone says, we want you to just do whatever you want to. And I, and I like that world, but I also live in the world where you have multiple people making decisions and you got to decide if that's what you want to do or not. And I still yeah. take jobs like that on from time to time. Yeah. yeah. It's just that as you get older or as you get older and more experienced, maybe people trust you more than they did when you were first starting. And, and but yeah, it was. It definitely was one where did they did they pick the best design? No, but I I decided to stick with it. Yeah, get it out yeah. there. Yeah. That's good. That's good that you did. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It, it, he's no. He just had a lot of notes, and it was a lot of back and forth. And yeah, that's what it was with him. It's interesting yeah. though, because I had for, literally until we said we were going to do this episode with you, I had forgotten about Me it. Me too. I'd forgotten about it. And then I was like, oh, that was a weird convergence of our lives. But um, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> Everyone can go and buy one now. Yeah, and go see what go we're buy a about. gold gorilla yeah, and yeah, check yeah. it out for yourselves. Yeah, yeah they did like yeah. three. It ended on a positive note. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, buy like one. I, said, I think people were disappointed. They were kind of like, you know, it, it's both. It's got both sides of its head. There's no skull showing. And <laughs> We thought this was going to be a real James Groman. <laughs> yeah. So, um, not, I, I didn't really hear anything about it. It was like, you know, after that initial release. So, yeah. Yeah. There's well, some, yeah. So, there's, and there's some good comments. There's some good questions too about Universal Monsters TMNT. If you actually go Just back further, back. someone asked too if you could show oh. or talk about your Cthulhu sculpt. Yeah, there's a couple of questions. Mm. Are you working on a Cthulhu stuff? There you go. Oh, I did one already. Let me um, see your new Cthulhu, James, as well. Oh, here it is. This dude. Wow, so, check uh, him out. That's wow. crazy. Oh, cool. Amazing. Yeah, I'm a um, huge HP Lovecraft fan. and But 52 Toys, which is a company that they were actually at DesignerCon and came over and talked to me a couple of years back and wanted to work with me and... Um, they said the first thing they want to do was a Cthulhu. They want to do three Cthulhus. They wow. want to do a steampunk Cthulhu. Wow. They want to do a robotic one. They want to do, you know, the, um, just a straight Cthulhu how, as I saw him. Yeah. And being a fan of the character and H.P. Lovecraft and everything, it's like it's a character I've always wanted to do. Yeah. So I, I leapt at it at the chance. And so he's been done. I think they've done two releases. Uh, this is a good segue for me to mention that I will be getting, I believe I'm getting 15 of them for mm. designer con and mm. they're uh, purple. Nice. Is that what you're talking about, Luis? The color, color Cthulhu, new color for decon. That's what everyone's looking at. All right, cool. Yeah. It's, um, whoa. Yeah. This so, one's great. Wow. Uh, look at that. Uh, that's a beast. That's gorgeous. Dude, that's great. Look at that yeah. sculpt. It's crazy. It's crazy. And this is one that kind of benefits from, you know, not being painted. I think you do yeah. totally see the detail a lot more in the ones that are unpainted. But yeah. it's uh, a darker color, that's why too. Yeah. Yeah. And they did a they did a pure green one and then they did uh the fully painted one as the first release. This will be the third release that they do. Oops. <laughs> 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 that happens. Yeah. Yeah. This was an early one, and the vinyl's a lot softer durometer, so it's like it doesn't really stick together that well. But um, this is this is a, um, a this was a great project because it got me to, a chance to do my version of a character that almost every artist that does horror and sci-fi had done their version of this creature at one point. 
Um, I just, once again, I wanted to bring something to the table other than the wings and the tentacle mouth and the six eyes and everything. So I actually put, uh, he has a mouth underneath his tentacles. Oh, oh cool. His chest. So it's like his tentacles draw you in and then the mouth Whoa. finishes the job. Oh, so good. That's wild. It's dope. It's so wild. Are you yeah. a fan of Akamatsu? What is it? Akamatsu, the artist Akamatsu from Japan. Uh, yeah, actually, um, did he do one? It's kind of got, it looks like cauliflower almost in the head. Is that? Do we have a Cthulhu up there? It might be a different one that I'm thinking of. No, I don't know. I feel like we have his Cthulhu up here somewhere. I'd have to find it. Yeah. And like I said, it's like illustrators have done them for years and sculptors have done them. And uh, some of my favorite sculptors have done their own version. So being able to work on it myself for uh, 52 toys, that was amazing. And that, you know, that's a good relationship that is, is ongoing. I'm, I'm doing a, I finished an Ultraman monster for them. Uh, Gamora. Oh, that's awesome. Which, this guy is. Oh uh, my gosh. Oh. I haven't seen that. Oh before. my gosh, so that's wild. so good. And this is uh, my favorite monster when I was a kid. That was on Ultraman. Only it's my version of him. That's amazing. So this is going to be released here pretty soon. It's uh, this is one of the first poles out of the mold. Oh wow. wow, that's so, so dude, cool. Dude, you're seeing it here first, Holy people. Shit. That's incredible. It's so, gigantic. Kyle has this really good question here about: Do all of these uh, monsters exist in some sort of interconnected universe, or is there like a sort of a similar narrative? Um, actually, yes, in the way that, uh, in fact, I wrote a story. I was, I was talking to an artist that I, I know that we were going to do a little eight page, 10 page story that, um, when we released Kaiju Killer, uh, Kaiju Killer was the figure that he's right behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Um, yeah, yeah. that's with instinct toys. And, uh, he of course kills Kaiju. He's like kind of the Ultraman of the stone age. He actually protected the human race, um, uh, in prehistory uh, from giant monsters and stuff. So he was the kind of tie together. Once you create a kaiju killer, that means there's other kaiju in the world. And I, I figured that at one time, he's probably fought Rotten Rex. He's fought King Corpse. Maybe that's why King Corpse looks the way he does. All those things. So he was kind of the thing that kind of was the thread that kind of tied everything together, I guess. So there is roughly, you know, each character would probably have his own storyline, but he, but yeah, Kaiju Killer kind of ties them all together in one universe. Are you going to build a diorama? <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to get a hold of Clav. Clav 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can do it. Yeah. Okay. Oh God. Hey, that that's a really good idea. For a show? For a show, but we're going to have to coordinate with you to make it happen. Okay. Because we'll you've got that. the mother line, the line to the. Wow, that and a comic book too. So the Godzilla that you're currently working on, is that going to be as big as that too? Like, is yes, it a big toy. It's oh big. God. Is it going to be even bigger? Uh, he's. It's basically kind of like a rotten rest Rex version of Godzilla. So it's pretty big. Oh my awesome. god! Wow. Right. You're not awesome. allowed to show us that yet. Not You're allowed to show it. About it. No, I, I had concept art and everything, and I, I've just started the sculpture. So nice. there's not a whole lot to look at anyway. No. But. Ah. <laughs> That's ready. I'm excited. And that's with Mondo. Yeah. It's with Mondo, and I, I've been talking to them a lot, and I have a lot of projects going with them right now. And they, um, I have a great relationship with, like, Hector Arce is a guy I work with there. Um, and uh, we've got a bunch of, I pitched them a bunch of stuff, and basically we've got a bunch of stuff planned that's really super cool. I really am excited about where that company's going uh, and what they're doing. And, um, we, and you know, I did the man thing for them that uh, yeah. Marvel Comics character that they just yeah. did the movie for Disney Plus. Um, did they? And the movie that he appeared in was that. Werewolf by Night, right? So yeah. I pitched them a Werewolf by Night design, and that, so they uh, Marvel approved my Werewolf by Night. So we're going to be doing a Werewolf by Night wow. figure. Wow, that's amazing! Awesome. Very cool. Um, my, like my favorite comics when I was a kid were Man Thing and Werewolf by Night. So you so, are living the real wow, dream. Man. Can like we see your man thing? You like do, you, as a kid. do you have it? What'd you say? Can we see your man <laughs> thing? <laughs> well, uh, nice, one. nice one. <laughs> that joke's getting old. <laughs> oh, oh, that so man. So dope. Oh, that's mind blowing. When did that release? Uh, it 
it, a while ago. The pre-orders were at Designer Con last year. Okay. They did the pre-orders on this guy. But since then, they've done four other versions of it, different paint schemes. And they will have a they will have one at um, Designer Con this year that they'll be selling. And it's um, uh, Devil's Kaiju did the paint job on it. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yep, very Who cool. is David? Um, it's That's an impressive uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, Amy at Lulu Bell's husband, David. He's yeah. a super nice guy. He did the paint yeah, job. Yeah, he's awesome. He's doing the release. He won. Yep. Um, I that's his handle. Yes. So, yeah, that was another dream project. So it is. It's like, you know, I've been doing this for 30 something years. So it's like about time I get to do the stuff I want to do. Well, yeah. I think you are living the dream for sure. Yeah. And you, I mean, you're teaching us all how it's done. Yeah. I'm going to make some racist pieces to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Celebrate Jesus' career. Just celebrate Jesus' career. I'm gonna eat some Reese's Pieces. So this is the first. Marin has yeah. never eaten anything live on the podcast. Before. No, Reese's Pieces. Amazing. Reese's are the bomb. Yeah, they are. It's crazy. So, what do you have? What else do you have for decon this year? Uh the um, I don't think I have them in here, but I have uh the Manstodon. I don't know if you've seen the. It's the big mammoth uh, creature that's kind of zombified. He's like a human mat with a mammoth head, and he's got chains on him, and he's carrying a big club and an axe oh, hand, and he comes with a little caveman, um, and he has an alternate head that is uh, a woolly rhino, and uh, he's about the size of all my other figures. He's about 12 inches tall, and I will have... I think 15 painted ones from the factory of those uh, in what we're calling uh, slime, the slime version. Slime, mm -hmm. it's like a slime green. And then we got a bunch of brown blanks that I will have. And I got, I think I'm going to have about 15 of those. So lots of stuff coming from overseas. Please, God, make it here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's you know, that gods, dropping with? The shipping gods himself, the combo. That Thumbo. is Black Dot, is the company oh. that's okay. making those. Nice. Another client that I love them. I, I'm doing a ton of stuff for them. I just finished a uh, Universal Monsters Frankenstein figure for them. That is, is some people say it's they think it's the coolest thing I've done so far. And I, I'm a Frankenstein fan, so um, I love it too. So that's uh, I don't know when they're gonna. Sh I think they're gonna get a painted version before they start to show that. Someone's cool. asking on Instagram about your Galactic Warlord. Galactic Warlord. What is that? Is that something uh, or nothing? I may have to change my Instagram handle to that. It's a Galactic Warlord. It's <laughs> a great name. Yeah. Huh. I'm not... saying you should make a Galactic Warlord now. I don't know. So, so what was the question in the chat about TMNT and Universal Monsters? Was it? It was a. I think it was more of a comment than a question. Like, damn, the TMNT mutant something are really dope. Let's talk about those. Mashup is so rad. Yeah, so how did this mashup come about? Uh, yeah, these are... Oh, get the reflection off there. Perfect. These are these are really fun. This is... Am uh, allowed to buy these? <laughs> Target. Target. Yeah. Target's... The, I mean, yeah, this is... The, the big dogs have this these, one. These are like real toys. Mm -hmm. Yes. Real toys. Uh, for even real though, people. you know, uh, I didn't get samples from the company right away, so I was running around the Target trying to find them. And nobody had them. And then finally they started coming in. So they're really hard to find even at Target. But uh, I, I had mentioned this gentleman, Tre uh, Trevor Zamet, that I worked with on the Batman figures. He used to work at NECA. He was the, he was the Mutant Ninja Turtle guy there. He, okay. he knows the history of the characters and everything. So he left DC and he went back to uh, work for NECA. And yeah. he's kind of the, the guru there for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And he called me and he knew I was a big fan of, so knowing everything he knows about Mutant Ninja Turtles and then knowing that I am like a huge fan of all the Universal Monster movies, um, it was just a natural kind of team up to design a new release of these uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Universal Monsters mashups, which is something they've done with the history of the brand. They've done, I think, like three or four different versions of them, of them as monsters over the years. So this is just our version that's a little bit more realistic. That's amazing. Very cool. It's amazing. So do you collect anything? Do you collect toys? Do you collect sculptures? Do you collect CDs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you see, you see my CD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I'm big into when I work. I listen to movie soundtracks. I listen to video game soundtracks. It's like I love the instrumentals. Um, it kind of takes you into another world. It's really inspiring and stuff. So I love that stuff. But yeah, I, I used to collect a lot more toys than I do than I do now, mostly because I have a studio in the basement that if you guys could see the rest of my office, it is spilling out. I have no room for anything. Uh, it's been like a very busy couple of years and I'm running out of room even for my own toys. So I don't have a whole lot of room. It has to be something really extra special yeah. for me to buy it. Uh, so I'm trying to think of the last actual toy I bought for myself. You know, I have to look at it, look at it again, look at it again, and then go, all right, I'm gonna pull the trigger because where am I gonna put it? Right. <laughs> Right, totally. Um, and I'm trying to think. Uh, there's a guy, Paul Komoda, that he's more from the garage kit industry, but he also does stuff for film yeah. and movies. And he's done a bunch of HP Lovecraft characters, but he's a guy that maybe a lot of the designer toy guys don't know. But um, he's a guy that I collect. When I see one of his figures, he's just, he's unbelievable. So I buy most of his stuff. Oh, and I did just see that... Um, Oh my God, it's it's been a long day. So I'm, uh, names are escaping. We don't remember anything since we had COVID, so we, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we're suffering from long COVID. <laughs> yeah, um, Max Toy is working with him. Oh, huh. toy. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, they just hired him to do a sculpture for them. Oh, and um, David Igo has a company doing these characters called Monsters, and he's designing some of those. So he's starting to get it more into the toy thing. And uh, but yeah, Paul Komoda is the bomb. He's awesome. And so those are things that you collect. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the that's one of the artists that I actually seek out and okay and grab his stuff. But we'll like I said, it it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. tough to find room for anything, so I don't do a lot of collecting anymore. Books, I, I collect books, and I have way too many books. So I've started to I took a bunch of my books into the Cleveland Institute of Art and donated them to school because I'm running out of room for books, all art books and stuff. Yeah. I understand that one. Yeah. Books, books are taking is, it, you know. Is... We have too many bones. Too well, many we're, bones, and me and my wife are empty nesters and we live in a small ranch. We don't need anything, you know, and so right. I have a big studio that's the size of the house in the basement. It takes up the entire basement and it's full to the brim. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle said that's because you only make two foot tall so I really see. Yes. <laughs> that is absolutely right. <laughs> Yes. When do you always sculpt two sides? So if you sculpt in something this size, you sculpt it this size. If you sculpt something big, you make it bigger. Or do you make the sculpt small and scale them? I sculpt to size. Oh, you do. And yes, uh, but when you scan a figure, of course, you have the ability to make it any size you want. So the companies yeah. can make it slightly smaller. They can make it slightly bigger. Whatever they want to do. Um, like this Godzilla that I'm doing, they're probably going to want to shrink it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You may have pushed the boundaries a little bit too far. Uh, yeah, could be. You know, as as I ripped the face off a couple times and then re replaced it. You know, yeah. it, got, it got it grew a few inches. If, yes. if anybody has any questions, drop them in the chat. You can do it on Instagram too, but mainly on uh, YouTube or Facebook. We will ask them of James. Is it um, is it time for toy time? I think it's almost time for toy looking... time because then we can come back to ask James. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a few questions. I'm just seeing what people are asking on Instagram real quick. We get people on Instagram, you should really come over to yeah. YouTube because there's a lot of interaction happening tonight, but you're only seeing us and James and everybody's over there. So come on go over. on to YouTube. Yeah. The water is warm and you yes. can see everything. That's right. <laughs> so there you go. Are we all are we are we set to run over to Toy Tank? Yeah, I think so. It looks like we may, maybe had a little connection uh, issue there, but uh, I think uh, I think we may be good now. Good. All right. Okay, cool. so can we have our graphic and our song, please? Yeah. Toy All right, yo, you guys Alex. ready for this this song? Yes. yes. Come on, Alex. Toy tank, take me to the toy tank to show me your fucking toys. This is great. So this week we have Nervous Rack. And so typically Toy Tank has been for like newer artists or whatnot, but this dude has been doing it. He's got great toys, sometimes a little creepy, sometimes a little cute, but always so fucking cool. Let's welcome Nervous Rack to the Toy Tank without further ado. Hello, Nervous Hello, Rack. How welcome. are you? 
Hello, hello. Hey, how? Oh, no. Sorry about that. I uh, had a little bit of a uh, technical difficulties. Hopefully, hopefully we're good now. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We can hear we you. We are good. We're we we're good. very well aware of your work. All right, perfect. Uh oh. Do you do you have new uh, interesting thank you. things Appreciate to show? Up? Been been doing it for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, do I have a bunch. I don't know how much time violent. you guys have, but I do do have um. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh no. Oh no. Oh, well. <laughs> He's going to come oh, back, I'm sure. That was a really good song, Alex. It I was, was glad you threw the F-bomb in there. It right was at, the, like, at the end, I was ready to like, work drive home. Home. When it's, he comes uh, back, we'll bring him back on. Hey, James, there's a question about what your favorite movies are. Oh, oh. are we back? No, no. no we're oh. again. So, James, what are some of your favorite movies? Obviously, King Kong. I'm guessing yeah, you it... know King Kong. That got me into art, man. When I saw that movie, it was like, it just blew me away and dinosaurs and apes and a pretty girl and everything. It's like everything you need. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, Ray Harryhausen movies, Universal Monster movies, uh, Creature in Black Lagoon. Like Someone movies. asked if you'd be interested in, um, in doing uh, uh, a version of the Sinbad characters from the Ray Harryhausen movies. Is that yeah. possible? Is there anything to make from those movies? Oh, heck yeah. Cyclops is from Seven Foot of Sinbad. Cyclops, Cyclops yeah. is one of the great monster designs of all time. It's it's amazing. They have the goat legs and the horn. And, yeah. so, and I've been approached to do him. I just, I don't know if, whenever you're doing, license, when you're doing licensed characters that have to look exactly the way they do in a movie, it doesn't excite me as much as doing something that's my twist on the character. For the Cyclops, would you be able to incorporate some aspect of an elephant into it? Isn't that where the like original concept comes from? Is the elephant skull? Oh yeah, that's that's cool that you know that. I think it was that people saw elephant skulls and they had the big nasal hole. Yeah, and they well, we're really lucky. We have the Museum of Natural History, and we have little kids that want to go to it all the time. So I get to just like freak out on the, you know, the mammoth. Uh, skeleton. Yeah. Mammoths, yeah, so really cool. cool. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, there was one company that wanted me to do a bunch of Harry Harryhausen characters, but they didn't have the license, and I don't like to do unlicensed yeah. stuff based on someone's work, because you get a bad reputation for that, I think, and especially with some, because I'm working on licensed stuff all the time. It's a dangerous but, game. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> um, But I, you know, if someone said if I took Harryhausen's Cyclops and kind of did my thing with him, and was once again true to the character. I'd yeah. love to do stuff like that. I'd love to do anything from the Sinbad movies. I'm a fan. Uh, Angels, I remember, in 1984. Sorry to pronounce your name correctly. Just said, uh, any interest in putting your spin on the 20 million miles to Earth? Yeah, in a minute. What was the character from that movie? Uh, I was wondering if I have one around here anywhere. Uh, oh, because that was that was something I used to collect. Was uh, there was a company Billiken that used to put out vinyl figures. They were like one of the first companies, they did like Barbie style toys, but then all of a sudden they decided, hey, let's try some monster toys. And they started doing like old universal monsters. They did some Harryhausen monsters, but they did, you know, that the character that uh, that the viewer was just talking about. And it's, they call it the Yemer, which is kind of based That's on- That's what she said. So I didn't even realize that was a word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. over that. Yema. Yeah. The Yemer based on, there's a giant, that was named Yemer that got its power from the earth. And that's, and the Yemer is a creature that comes to earth, but it's real little, but because it, it's on the earth and it came from Venus, it grows really gigantic breathing in our atmosphere. Oh, wow. So that's, that's what people started calling it. Uh, but the movie's 20 million miles to earth. And I, I love the character, man. I, I'd love to put my spin on it. Do you still go back and rewatch those movies or do you just keep it? Oh yeah. In your Every mind? once in a while I get like the urge to go back and, once again, those those were inspirations to me back in the day, just because uh, talk about it like Ray Harryhausen. You talk about a guy that showed us things we never saw before. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I hate retreads of things that I hate people that just go back and do the same things over and over again. I love people that are like that. They're basically trailblazers design wise. And he was one for yeah. sure. Yeah, 100 percent. 
100%. That's an interesting question, it Keith. Is. Keith asks, of all the toys you've created over the years, what was the hardest one to create slash deliver? So we've gone from your favorite to the hardest. Oh, wait, before you answer, while you're thinking about that, uh, I just want to say sorry to Nervous Wreck that we lost your feed. Yeah, hopefully uh, let's, We're going to email you and we'll schedule you to come on another time. We've got a better connection. I just I don't want to yeah. blaze over it, but no. we're just going to continue on talking to, to James. So, James, yes. The uh, question is, what's the hardest one, hardest sculpt you had to create or deliver? Man, uh, I just, I had one recently that I can't mention <laughs> that was probably one of them. Oh, my God. Tell um, us what it was. You can mention I, it here. You're just, it's just the three of us. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I think I can say that it was, it was a, a Nickelodeon character. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And they said I could do my own take on it. Yeah. And it was, it was tough because it's like once again that it was a character that was tough to put my spin on and take. It was very easy to take it too far. I struggled with it. The armature I built, I kept changing. It's the last thing you want to do is change the design after the armature is built. And I started doing that and it got a little bit rough and, and I was telling my wife, it's time to start sculpting in ZBrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. So to be able to make and, those edits. Yes, exactly. You know, and it, it is time for me to start working in ZBrush and it is my ultimate goal. I, I've done some stuff in ZBrush, but nothing that can be reproduced um, at this point, but I want to get there. Would that be sacrilegious? Well, to some clients, I have clients that I actually, I had a couple projects come in from the same client they want me to do. And I said, I could get both of these done at the same time. If you take my design and we give it to a, uh, a digital digital sculptor yeah. and then I sculpt the other one traditionally. And they said, no, we want them traditional. We want them done traditional. Yeah. There is a difference. There you is. Know? There is. Um, because there's that because moment. Because that's the imperfections. It's the, it's yes. the imperfections. The imperfections. And there's also yeah. that moment that you discover, I think, with your hand in the imperfection, you're, you're led somewhere. And yeah. I, I, just, right. I can't imagine, you know, the computer's not giving you negative feedback. Yeah. And, you know, mirroring, like the whole mirroring feature where yeah. it sculpts yes. one arm and it sculpts the other arm, it, it's a wonderful thing, but it's mm -hmm. a terrible thing as well when you yeah. use it when you rely on it and you kind of almost use it as you know a workaround you know it's like because when i see something that's absolutely 100 percent symmetrical you know there's something just there's something off about that and i think yes. people notice it 100 I, I, I recently bought a piece of safubi which i absolutely love and i just remember holding it and I, you know, I don't normally think of Safubi as ever being 3D sculpted. Yeah. Just because I know kind of, you know, how it's the world behind it. And I was just holding this figure and looking at it and just marveling at all the detail. And then it dawned on me that it had been made in 3D. And it, it wasn't clear from looking at it just from the symmetry of it, but from the level of detail, I was like, okay, no human being put this much microscopic detail into one sculpt. Well, <laughs> but this is all organic. If I showed you the piece I'm talking about, I'm not, you know, it, it's all good. It's just, you know, there are certain things that you can accomplish in 3D with symmetry that can lead you into really interesting places. But I think if you're trying to create a zombie insanity monster, at some point you want that you know, negative pushback where you're like, oh, the clay just did something I wasn't expecting at all. And that's a really cool shape. And yeah. In there. If, you, if you go and you want to buy a movie perfect version of Captain America or Iron Man or whatever, yeah, it's it's definitely a wonderful tool. And there's guys yeah. that do it better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. a guy, Joe Mena, who, who's like, uh, just does, he works for everybody and he does the most amazing, realistic uh, his, his, he's the, one of the masters of human anatomy and stuff like that. And I'm friends with him online. And But he looks at my stuff and he goes, I couldn't do that. I don't think he would want to do it. But right. he's, he does stuff that's like he's one of those masters. He's educated over like Russia and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like a master sculptor at human anatomy. There's a place for that. And I think 
it's when you're doing a Marvel character that's got to look like, or a character that's uh, been designed for a film that is symmetrical, then yeah. it's a great tool. Absolutely. 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 Someone also asked, um, are there other sculptors out there that inspired you? You've named a few people that you collect. You've named people that you're interested in. Are there inspired. specific sculptors that inspired you? When you started out. When you started out, let's yeah. say. Uh, yeah. Um, Steve Wang is is one, and he's uh, he's at Designer Con every year. He's the guy who um, he didn't sculpt the original Predator, but he painted the original Predator. He's been around for a while. He's a master special effects guy, one of the greatest right. sculptors out there. Um, once again, it's like it's been a long day, and I'm forgetting the name of his collectibles company. That's but he amazing. has a collectibles company that does like museum style replicas. Yeah of uh movie characters and stuff like that plus he does some original characters of his own as well but he was one of my great um inspirations uh ray harryhausen of course he did he hired sculptors to work on a lot of his characters but he did a lot of them uh himself as well um paul komoda is another guy he's been around since the garage kit days he's a guy that i love rick baker I mean, a lot of these guys are special effects guys yeah. that I you know, worship my whole life and stuff like that. So, yeah, a lot of those guys, I'd say, oh, there's Mark Newman is a guy that does tons of stuff for Sideshow Toys. Um, and he's done like, some pieces for Mondo and everything. But he's a guy that his stuff, in he's a traditional sculptor, master, but and he's working in ZBrush now. And his ZBrush stuff is it's some of the best I've ever seen. It's uh, It's got that bit. Uh, he's got the sensibility of a of a traditional sculptor, and he brings that into his ZBrush work, and it just they still have that bit of the human touch, the human yeah, hand. That's amazing. He's good. Do you ever think that you'll get to work on a movie? I worked on um, the Battle of the Five Armies, The Hobbit. Oh, nice. Okay. That was uh, um, I did some design work for some films that were never made, but I. I was um, working on a project at American Greetings, um, and our boss met Richard Taylor, who is the he's the guy that runs What a Workshop, at a convention, and we all got to fly out to New Zealand, a bunch of us from American Greetings, because we we're going to work on some projects together, and we had a couple TV shows we we're going to work on together and stuff, and I hit it off with Richard Taylor. Um, because he comes from a garage kit background. He used to buy garage kits. He used to order my garage kits, but he lived in New Zealand. He couldn't get them and stuff. And we just hit it off, became really good friends. I'm still in touch to him, with him to this day. And we're sitting in a meeting at American Greens, and he goes, you want to come out and work on The Hobbit? We're, we're starting The Hobbit movies. Yeah. Like, Hell yeah. And my, <laughs> and my boss is at American Greetings. I give him a lot of credit. They go, Jim, this is an opportunity you can't pass. We're letting you go. So they let me go out there. And I worked on uh, some of the the wargs. They're the orcs that ride the giant wolves. Yeah, 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 yes. And um, Azog, which is the big villain. There was a point where Azog was not going to be CG. He was going to be a guy in a costume. And so I met the guy that was in the costume, and I helped get him into this costume the one day. And he was like this seven-foot uh, dude named Conan. He ends up in the last. He ends up in Battle of the Five Armies, but he's he's on screen for like sixty seconds. But he was originally going to be the main villain. It was, okay. it was crazy. That's um, amazing. Goblin Town. There was a Goblin Town is all CG goblins, but at one point it was going to be actors, and so I did some designs for what the costumes might look like and stuff, and how they could change the human form to try to hide the fact that it's a person in a costume and yeah. stuff. It was that was probably one of the, the highlights of my life was going out there and working with those people. They were the most amazing craftsmen and artists on the planet, and wow, that is incredible! That's wow, fantastic. is there a collaboration or a project or a license that you've not worked on or are not in the process of working on? He that said you... it a few times already in this. I, I said a few. I know he said a few. But he others. wants to do the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, and that's it. Just, that's that's it. the that's only one. That's what he's one. waiting for. No, the creature, no, that's just... like number one, creature of the Black Lagoon. Is there anything else that's like somebody else that you would? You're, yeah, your white whale. Yeah. Boy, uh, I have, well, the creature, I have a creature design that we're waiting for me to <laughs> <laughs> right. an approval on. But uh, 
I'm talking about ones that are not that are not in the works. Like, what would be the ultimate ultimate? Yeah, um, man, we were talking about the Cyclops. Yeah, yeah. I would love yeah. to. Do, I would love to do my take on him, but I also like. Uh, yeah, um, Bernie Wrightson's Frankenstein. I mean, if you ever seen mm -hmm. Bernie Wrightson's an artist. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Frankenstein monsters. Like, I'd love to do that. Um, yeah, there's. There, I, I, I'm going to think of 20 million things once we get off the... Yeah. The, the yeah. But, um, yeah, those are the ones right off the top of my head. But Universal Monsters, period. I designed a mummy. We're waiting for the mummy to be approved. And Metal and a Mutant, which so is another good. one I designed, but they're all kind of like on the the runway, <laughs> waiting for takeoff. What uh, What do your grandkids think about your work? Oh, um, well, I was just... I just was with uh, Chris and Amanda Reiniak over the yeah. weekend. They came over and hung out this nice. weekend. And my granddaughter's like a huge fan. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're all, they're kind of artists and uh, they've sculpted. Oh, Part of Rotten Rex actually has, there's a little detail done by my grand, granddaughter that I left on there. That she came awesome. up and she put a little tool mark on it and I just left it on there. Oh, oh that's And great. she's like 16 now. But then my my grandson is probably the one that's into it the most, and uh, he is he's eight, so he's like uh, into the monster stuff. And he comes over and he does these awesome like sculptures of figures and stuff like that. They look like something from a museum, like real abstract. Look, that's it's, great. That's yeah, so they yeah, they love it. They they think it's really cool. That's, that's, that's good. Awesome. That's good. Okay, so we uh, we have nervous wreck back. Oh, right. should we try to uh, jump back into a toy tank, or uh, do you guys want to schedule for another time? I think let's if, do another if, time. Yeah. Yeah, let's do another time. Uh, I feel like. Is the internet going to work? We could yeah. try. Yeah, he uh, yeah. he has a better connection now. Yeah. Okay. Is? All right. Let's try let's it. it. You try you it? Sing you the song again? Let's sing the song again. Can you sing the song again, Alex? You guys want the song? You want the, the yeah. graphic? Yeah, yeah, I want the song. No, I just want you to sing it. I want you to be big on the screen and sing it. All right. Toy tank. Take me to the toy tank and show me your fucking toys. Woo! All right. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Got to record it. Yeah. Oh, this is a clear picture. There you oh, go. this is good. Yeah. Well, hey, the, the whole reason I did all that because I wanted to hear that song twice. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. That's really it. why. And I'm sorry, but hey, um, okay. we're kind of on, so I'm not going to really. I just put the camera one way, but um, thanks okay. for the guy. Thanks for the time, you guys. But um, this is one of my first ones. I just did this one, and this one's just it's kind of more like a. You got the little thing on the back, and it kind of moves up and down. Oh, so nice! It's a little ghost. Very Halloweeny. Like the little dude died. <laughs> more oh, like a story ghost. piece, and it's got like the his spirit kind of went up. Oh Aww. yeah yeah yeah. So, really see, so it's all hands, all hand sculpted. Uh, I actually did cast, um, made molds for this one to cast, but you know the base is huge. It's all handmade. You have actual. such a distinct style. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It took a while. You know, it took a long time. When I started, I was just you know trying to find doing whatever I could, and you know I actually did a few Star Wars pieces, and I. How long have you been um, making toys? It's been a while now. How, how long has it been? Uh, about 16 years. Wow. Wow. Um, I started when already, like, you know, the first wave of, like, all the Western dudes, like, you know, like, Kano, Huggy, and, um, you know, uh, Sket One, Mad One, all those guys were already, like, taking off. Yeah. Um, that's kind of when I came on, like, the Kid Robot forums. And I just started doing that, you know, collected for like about a year, but figured that was too expensive, man. I couldn't do it. So I just started making my own, you know, started here and there and uh, but ever since just been doing it. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, can you show us the guy in the background, the green, the tall yeah, green guy? Because we can yeah. yeah. So this is actually a um a uh, hundred what was it, the hundred percent the Dumpster. Oh. oh wow! Yeah. So wow. I just flipped it upside down, and I made a custom out of that. That's amazing. Oh, that's so, so good. That's awesome. He's looking at the butterfly landing on him. Uh, got eyeballs on the knuckles there. That's wild. Cool. 
and I use computer parts. Nice for the background and just paint wow. them all on there. You have such a good way of making these uh, these figures so like emotionally, you know, connected. It's uh, you know, like the guy playing the uh, the piano in the background, or that kid being lifted by the balloons, or even this uh, this angry uh, this this angry dumpster. All of them are just like I feel like so related to them. Oh, wow! Thank you. Yeah, they they emote. I, they emote. So this one here, yeah, he's playing this. I like. I like like beat like hip hop and like production me like instrumental music and so I was listening to a lot of that and when I started making this one, he's got his own makeshift drum machine and this one. so you know everything's all made like the t the tables made this is just plastic yeah. party table. So these are all one of a kind. They are like, do you yes. have molds of them? Do you have any interest in making multiples of them, or um, just? Like doing I do, the one pieces. I do some. Um, actually, uh, what I did have is uh, I made this one. Nice. So oh, this so cute. Guy. Oh. So, uh, he's crazy. He's all messed up on shrooms. <laughs> this, this one, I did actually. Is there I a little bite out of the mold mold of that Whoa, one. look at that. Those are great. They're yeah, he, yeah, he's got a little bite mark. Yeah, oh, that's so good. And those yeah, are actually I... bite, my actual bite marks. <laughs> no, they are. <Yeah. laughs> nice. I'll tell you, that is one of the things that makes your pieces so unique. Is um, I always tell people with my pieces, like you, when you look at the sculpture, I want it to be like you could almost read it like a book. You can look at like details on them and know mm -hmm. a bit of a storyline or a background and. The fact that you have that in these characters, I think, is really strong. Oh, they wow. Do like they do you, feel like there's you, more to the story. That's high praise from the King of Monsters. And I know, right? Like, where's my manners? First of all, you know, I just got to say, you know, huge influence. You know, I appreciate your work. And it's an honor to, you know, talk to you, honestly. Oh, thanks a lot. I know you get that a lot. It's an honor to meet you because your stuff's great. Yeah, his stuff's oh, awesome. Absolutely. And oh man, I so appreciate that. And you know, I wish yeah. I was able to afford to, you know, get my hands on a, you know, any one of your figures and <laughs> do my. I mean, but really, there's not much I could, you know, do to improve or customize on your pieces. They're so. Uh, uh, to me, they look like hands off. You know, like the, you can't even, can't even mess with them other than just paint them. And well, thanks. Even, even though I'd love to see what you could do with them. I'm trying to see. I don't know oh, where. definitely. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I love the textures, yeah. the skin textures. Um, I'm I'm big on like a lot of times. I was doing a uh, this the character, the mat. It's the Manstodon, and he's like the big mammoth character. I was finding right. all these photos of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The way he looks now, he's like he's muscular, but his the weight is like kind of dragging his muscles down. And I love the the sense uh -huh. of structure on your characters and. The way the wrinkles of the skin is really convincing. Mm -hmm. The way it wraps. You know, yeah. Really? Because I don't think so. I have a hard time. Like, <laughs> well, I, I think on the little spirits, the one with the little spirit flying up into the air, those guys, those wrinkles are really nice. The way they wrap, they, they make sense. And they looks like you were looking at something that. On the little ghost here? Yeah. Oh, wow. I and I cheat. What? I cheat a lot. Like a lot of it is like I. I usually like hide it. Oh, yeah. Like and everything's just kind of weird. Like, like this, I'm not really too convinced on this yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that, it it's looks good. good. Yeah. Do you like with my students, like uh, students that I teach, they, I always tell them uh, a lot of times when they're drawing, they want to just make up wrinkles in pants. It's like just mm -hmm. go look in the mirror. You got a pair of jeans on or something. So <laughs> right, like you get them, get find some jeans that are just as baggy as the ones you're putting on your character and everything. Nothing wrong with taking some photos with your phone and and stuff to get them all right. I do it all the time. Absolutely. That's um that's uh McFarland's famous line. He's What's like that? we 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 fixed sculpting at McFarland Toys by using, and he said, let me just make it very clear, using a photograph 
<laughs> <laughs> and we sculpted what we saw. <laughs> yeah. Like if you put a character in robes, you know, they're like an ancient, like uh, Celtic priest or something, get a sheet and throw it over yourself. You know, it's like the wrinkles, will, it'll show you how the wrinkles wrap around muscles and shoulders and legs and everything. It's, yeah, it's like, I'm all oh, about so dope. Come on. Yeah, look at yeah. The compass. Oh yeah, this is, this was a live sculpt and then I just raffled it. Nice. Oh, so this great. is all made from scratch. Wow. Little burlap sack. Yeah. Bunch of kids in there. Bunch of little kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that. like I try to focus on like little details. Like this is just, you know, little all chain links done one by one. That's nice. a beautiful sculpt. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. It really is. It's great. So you worked a few years ago. What does it say? Suburban what year Vibe? this is? Oh. oh, 2014. You, with our friend Rob, who used to mm -hmm. own Suburban Vinyl, that put out the, the Inner Child Vinyl wow. toy. So, you know, you... Yep. And it was yeah, actually... Yeah. That was my first, first, you know, production piece. Cool. Yeah. You know, props I love to him. Rob. Um Shout and out it was it wasn't done in all 3D sculpt. It was it was sculpted originally the, and then uh, it was tooled and you know kind of modified to be able to be casted. Yeah. You know, but it was so, straight from. What's that, sir? Is that Super Sculpey that you use mm -hmm. it? Or uh, yeah, it's Super Sculpey and Magic Sculpt. Okay. Nice. Uh, but I, you know, I mean, I've got tons of work here that I'm, you know, that I'm. <laughs> work in progresses work in wow. progresses uh, I'm actually working on some pieces for a show um, you know got this crazy huge piece Amazing. Oh, wow. and this is all original you know everything's all no scrap no, no platform so good it's great it's so good yeah. Um, I started doing customs, but I tried. I try to. Oh, thank you. I try to get away from that and doing more original, original sculpts. That's good. But um, producer, you know, a little bit of you... resin, um, some resin. What's thank that? You. I just wanted our producer to put your tag in the. Uh, oh, oh, thank he you. Did, thank so you. thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so but you know, this is like the newest piece that I made. Uh, I made. I actually made four of these. Very cool. So good. Oh, this is great. This is such great work. When is your show? Uh, well, yeah, it's next sometime year. next year. Um, they're yeah. kind of, you know, I just got to work on a bunch of body of work still. I still got a whole bunch of pieces, but um, I don't know if we can make it official with you guys, but um, yes. yes, please. Yes, it's you official. Know, we do it's have official. It's in the it, schedule. Write it in blood. It's in there. It's in there. <laughs> here. I don't remember the I don't remember the month, but it's in there. My phone's uh, dead, so I can't tell you. Yeah, it no, was I believe happy. May, sometime in May, because there you go, May. I the think the initial date was then. like in the in the winter, and I'm like, oh, I can't really, you know. I asked you if it gets real cold out there that time. Yes, and it does. So, freezing. If you want to know the second Saturday it's in freezing. May. But yeah, it's you Thank know you. it is it is going to be in May. May. May with clutter. Nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, you guys. May 13th. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you and so James, much. Thanks for James coming on. I, thank you, James Groman. I appreciate your work and you know, thank you for all those compliments. Very humble. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's like your stuff was when I it just was this hit me over the head when the, the images started coming on. It's really, really beautiful stuff. <laughs> oh, thank you. Maybe. It's dope. Yeah. That's so good. Thank you. I appreciate right. you guys. Yeah, awesome. keep pushing the That's storytelling, me. man. It's like, because right. I think it's not a lot of people do it. It's like thinking of your pieces Same having thing. that little bit. You're, you're telling me something about the character and the, like, look at your posing. Could you push the posing a little bit more? And all that stuff is, uh, all that stuff is all part of telling me who the character is. Uh, so it's something that's working really in your benefit. So I would try more of it. Push on that more. Yeah, get in a. I tell my students get in front of the mirror and get like uh, you're you got your crumpus and maybe you want to try to wrap your like kind of get inside his head. What is he thinking? Is he 
is he getting ready to take these kids somewhere and cook them up in a pot or is he <laughs> trying to escape somebody or is he uh, getting ready to attack another kid? Be real specific about how you're posing him and come up with that really specific pose that's aiming him in a specific direction. And I think that's something, I mean, your stuff's really good already. That's just a suggestion. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. That's, I'm going to definitely explore that a little more. And your textures, awesome. you know, it's like keep looking at textures, uh, the wrinkles and like scales and fur. And, you know, when I, when I'm doing a sculpt, I have like all these images hanging up. On a, I put them all on a big piece of illustration board. I tape them up there. And I just constantly stare at them while I'm sculpting to get a, a certain fur look, to get mushrooms to look correct. I got tons of mushrooms on pictures of real mushrooms and everything. And, you know, all that stuff gives that much more wow. realism to your characters. We, we all want stuff that's to... overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to come hang with you. And we're going to do like a, just a mass trip to your house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, 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 oh, uh, uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah, us and showing us your work. We Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, he's. Oh, oh, we were awesome. Okay. All right. So I just want to say, everybody in the chat, please like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Like the video; it helps us on YouTube. Just click the Do button. Those YouTube click the things. Button. Thanks for the Hit the bell. Today. Yeah, mm. all the stuff. All the stuff. All that nonsense. All the stuff. So. um James, what is your, before we depart for the evening, what is your top advice for people that are, again, into sculpting or toy making or, you know, anything in the arts? What would be your number one piece of advice? Uh, do it. Do it. Don't, a lot of toy designers out there that don't design toys, you know? It's like, just yeah. say they do it or yeah. are afraid to do it. And I'm like, um, you do a sculpture and you don't like it, do another one. It'll be better than the first one. Do another one. It's going to be better than the first two. That's it. You got to just do it. Uh, yes. Can't be lazy. You got to, you got to work your butt off and you'll get there. That's my awesome. opinion. That's perfect. amazing. All right, well, thank you for joining thank us, James. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. We could yeah, talk all nice night. Your positivity yeah, is infectious. It is. We love chatting to you. Thank and you. what booth are you at Decon? Do you know the booth number? Uh, 602. 602. So check him, James, out at Decon and um, five points next year. I'm keep sure. putting us all to shame, James. Yeah. Keep, yeah and I think Mondo's going to have some of the images of the things I'll be working on in their booth. So, oh, um, awesome. Yeah. Make sure you okay. check that out then. Um, Very cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and, and ch chatting with us. It's been a lot of fun. Join us on Thursday when we're going to be back at 6 p.m. with uh, Joe Ledbetter. So that's quite exciting. Oh, awesome. all right. Yeah, thank you, James. Joe. Thank All you, right. Nervous Wreck. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Maya Tanaka. Yes, thank you very much for getting off the Brussels sprouts, Maya Tanaka. <laughs> <laughs> we'll 